All right. So, um, <clears throat> interesting fact. It's now 5:23 a.m. So I just did the Acts chapter 15 and read it and finalized it and uploaded it. And the finalizing process took quite a while. So I think you know this is almost an hour since I started working on chapter 15. So. <laughs> That's one reason why it's taken a while to get to these. Not only you know do I have other things to do, but it's just taken a while. You know, uploading them takes uh, the least amount of time when I do it this way. And uh, but you know, I have to read through it, and it takes so much time. But then the finalizing process, for whatever reason, it's been taking quite a while. So anyway, this is probably gonna be the last one until uh, I get some time later today or tonight. I don't even know if I'm coming back home until late, but. Uh, Another quite long chapter, 40 verses, and um, Paul and Barnabas went separate ways. And now we're going to see Timothy joins Paul and Silas. Acts chapter 16, verse 1, Then came he to Derbe and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewess, and believed, but his father was Jesus. The Timothy that the epistles are written after, you know, the Timothy, uh, First Timothy, and uh, Second Timothy. And uh, Acts chapter 16, verse 2, which was well reported of by the brethren that you were at Lystra and Iconium. And so I guess we see also that um, Timothy was born kind of mixed with his, his mother a Jew and his father a Greek. He's well reported of by the brethren. Acts chapter 16 verse 3, Him would Paul have to go forth with him and, and took and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in those quarters for they knew all that his father was a Greek. He was not circumcised, and as they went through the cities, they delivered them to the decrees for to keep that were ordained of the apostles and elders which were at Jerusalem. And so were the and so were the churches established in the faith and increased in number daily. And so I guess you know we just talked about how you know circumcision isn't required for salvation, but I guess that uh, Paul thought it was good that he would be circumcised so there wouldn't be any contention with the Jews or whatever. So the Macedonian call, oops, uh, <clears throat> Acts chapter 16, verse 6. Now when they had gone throughout Phrygia and the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia, after they were come to Mysia, they essayed to go into Bithynia and Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. So why is it saying that the Holy Ghost, you know, forbade them to preach in certain areas? Was it because, you know, the opposition was too great, or... I don't know. Acts chapter 16, verse 8, And they passing by Mysia came down to Troas. And a vision appeared to Paul and I, and stood a man of Macedonia, and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go and gathering that the Lord called us for to preach the gospel unto them. So he was called to go to Macedonia through a vision. The conversion of Lydia. Therefore, loosing from Troas, we came with a straight course to Samothracia, and the next day to Neopo Neopolis, and from thence to Philippi, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia in a colony. And we were in that city abiding certain days. And on the Sabbath we went out of the where prayer was wont to be made, and we sat down and spake unto the woman which resorted thither. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple, of the city of Thyatira, which worshipped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attained unto the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized in her household, she besought us, saying, If ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. So there's just the story of a conversion of this woman named Lydia, who they stayed with, 
Yes, and Paul and Silas in prison. Uh oh. Acts chapter 16, verse 6, and it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, divination met us, which brought her gain by sooth saying. I think that I really like this story, but uh, I kind of forget how it goes, so I'm glad we're at this part now. Verse 17, the same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are servants of the Most High God, which shew unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days. Uh, so uh, she was heckling them or, or bothering them, following them around. She was possessed with a spirit of divination. And uh, she did this for many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out of the same hour. And when her masters saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers and brought them into the magistrates, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. So they were beaten and bound up. And I don't remember why I really liked that story. Um, not about them being arrested, but about who was possessed following them. I just thought that... Uh, I don't know. It's just finally like Paul got sick of it and he turned around and commanded the spirit to come out of her. I don't know. I just thought that was kind of interesting. And she, I don't know, she said, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show us the way unto salvation, which is true. But she was, like, mocking them, I guess. Anyway, for some reason I like that story. The Philippian jailer converted. Acts chapter 16, verse 25, And at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a quake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. So even though being beaten in condition in the, the way that they were, they were singing praises to God. And the keeper of the prison, awakening out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out a sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do not harm, do not do thyself no harm, for we are all here. And he called for a light, and sprang in, and came trembling, and fell down before Paul and Silas, and brought them out, and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And thou shalt be saved in thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house, and he took them the same hour of the night, and washed their stripes, and was baptized, he and all his straightway. And when they had brought them into his house, he set meat before them, and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. And when it was day, the magistrate sent the surgeons, saying, These men go. And the keeper of the prison told this saying to Paul, the magistrates have since let you go. Now therefore depart and go in peace. But Paul said unto them, They have beaten us openly uncondemned, being Romans, and have cast us into prison. And now do they thrust us out privily? Nay, verily, but let them come themselves and fetch us out. And the surgeons told these words to the magistrates, and they were feared, and they heard that they were Roman when they heard that they were Romans. And they came and besought them and brought them out and desired them to depart out of the city. And they went out of the prison and entered into the house of Lydia. And when they had seen the brethren, they comforted them and departed. So this is like the third time that something happened that let them out of prison. I mean, they didn't, I guess they didn't get out of prison that way, but then the guard kind of repented and uh, 
help them, but, you know, and, um, and then we got the, the bit with Paul saying that, you know, they're Romans, and, um, a lot of people go to that verse and they, they talk about how, you know, we should use the law when it's in our favor and stuff like that or whatever, but, um, I just thought it was kind of interesting too how the guard was going to kill himself and then, you know, they, they had mercy and grace on him and, and they, you know, they didn't want him to kill himself. And, uh, and they didn't know that, uh, you know, I don't think that they knew that he was going to be converted necessarily. Um, but, but he's still, you know, a human life. So they didn't want to see somebody take their own life. Um, And so, uh, yeah. Anyway. I guess I'll go on to the next one, probably later on, because it's going to take so long to finalize. But anyways, that's chapter 16. God bless.